I like that shirt no, you I'm wear joking. with Dave with Chappelle. Um, it says, "My name's Matthew. I'm white." And what's the last? Oh one? yeah, well this this was that's a great story because like okay, well, Dave Chappelle. First of all, let's just say it, call it like it is, is like the greatest guy on the planet. He's like the kindest, most generous. Everything about that guy is genuine. You know, as we know, he walked away from fifty million dollars, took a thirteen year break from entertainment got down to nothing and came back with the strongest comeback of all time as Incredible. far as I'm concerned. And and all staying genuine, staying with his passion, staying with his his truth. Like this guy is truth, you know, like he'll walk away from anything at any moment if they don't basically go with what he feels instinctively is what his art should be. And I don't know if you want to get like go to like how we met and all this stuff. It, sure, yeah. It, it was kind of a, a funny story. Um, so first of all, you know, back in the mid two thousands, there were two show, two things that I would actually cancel, like going to a wedding or cancel going to a dinner party. Uh, two thing, two shows. It was Chappelle's show and Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's like the two shows that you had to leave me alone. I gotta watch these episodes. You know, this is before streaming and before uh, i think tivo and all that stuff so you know i had to be in front of the tv to watch this thing so flash forward to i think it was 2008 um my friend ruth i was talking about earlier mm -hmm. ruth arzade who used to be prince's assistant became prince's manager uh she and i became friends we met at one of uh through a mutual friend, Melody Asani, who just married Flea a couple weeks ago. She's a great uh, designer. Yeah. And uh, so I had met Melody at a Prince party, one of his famous 3121 parties. And Melody introduced Ruth and I, and then we became friends. And, you know, so she would have me, like, she would invite me to these parties and things. And uh, one night I was at dinner with a friend uh, in New York City. And I got a text on my Blackberry, I remember, from Ruth. And she's like, get over to the Ganso Ward. P is going to do a show on the rooftop. It's going to be crazy. Oh, wow. And I literally remember like, but she's like, come alone. It was always come alone, you know. Of course. And because it was all the print stuff was always so exclusive. It's like just the fact that even I could go was insane, you know. And I always like pinched myself, like sitting in his living room over here, watching him and Stevie Wonder jam in the living room. You know, it's just uh, like, OK, as being the biggest Prince fan in the world, as we're here in Studio 3 at Sunset Sound. And I still have chills since we walked in. Mm -hmm. But so I, I, I tell my friend as an emergency, I made up some kind of story. Luckily, at the time, there was no Instagram or anything, so he couldn't see that. I would, <laughs> I would be posting something from like flaking on the dinner before the meal even got there. You know, I got an emergency. I got to go. I'm sorry. I'll explain another time, you know. Uh, so now they'll know the truth from this podcast. <laughs> I actually ran to a print show and I'm running through the, you know, the, the lobby of the Gansevoort. My name was actually on the list, which sometimes she would say, come over, and there would be some confusion. And I run to the elevator, and there's Dave Chappelle in the elevator. Um, and I'm like, holy shit, like, here I am about to go see Prince on a rooftop. But now I'm, like, completely starstruck. And I don't get starstruck, really, that much. I used to when I was younger. But now I'm kind of like, I've seen everything. And, you know, there's only a few people who give me that kind of reaction. And you hadn't met him before? And no, no, just, never met him. Into him at a party. I, was, I was just like the huge fan of the show you know i thought he was the funniest guy on the planet shook his hand said hello whatever we we get to like rush to the you know to the um rooftop print starts jamming that's the first night uh, another mutual friend uh fred yone who's a harmonica player frederick yone yeah he did uh, the line for or the little riff for the Chappelle show didn't he no actually no i, I don't think he he came in later okay that's a different guy i don't know who that is actually but no fred um uh, came with dave and like played with prince for the first time that night on that rooftop they did miss you by the rolling stones and dave got up and played tambourine you know and one of the prince uh symbol tambourines and so i'm just like kind of witnessing this thing it's, my mind is blown the whole thing and then flash forward to 2011 uh i'm uh, is this a no photography event always no photography yeah, yeah. and i wish like Unless you were my friend Afshin Shahidi, who was Prince's photographer at the time, so he, you know, he got all the photos. He put out a book uh, last year, actually, and you see a bunch of the, the party photos in there as well. So, and and that's the amazing thing is through the Prince world, I made some of my best, closest friends. You know, people that will be friends till the day I die. Like, 
or they die. But, uh, you know, I made a lot of good friends through that crew, which is amazing. And so 2011, show up at another Prince party. Um, and I, this guy, Fred Yone, comes up to me and he's like, I guess we had seen each other previously at the gra- backstage of the Grammys that night. So this was the night of the Grammys, 2011. And comes up to me and he's like, aren't you French? And I'm like, yeah. You know, so we start speaking French. And he's like, oh, I'm here with Dave. So we go and like, you know, greet Dave. I came with Lenny Kravitz. And we were like, it was obvious that the party had not started. And we're like, you know, Janelle Monet was supposed to jam with Prince. And uh, Misty Copeland was there. And so it was like, but it was obvious that we came too early. So we're, we all start like shooting pool and stuff. And, you know, I end up talking to Dave this time, like a real conversation. The previous time was just a handshake. And, uh, you know, it became like a, a legendary late night, you know. And so I guess Dave remembers that as the first time we met. He doesn't remember the elevator thing or vaguely remembers, but he definitely remembers that. And he has this story about how he thought I was a gangster and I was like a French gangster. <laughs> At the time, I had long hair, slick back, ponytail, you know. And uh, so, yeah, he always says that, which cracks me up. But uh, again, flash forward to 2015, I guess, 14, maybe 15 uh 15 i think uh same friend ruth i owe her a lot she's she's just been like a guardian angel and we're you know there for each other she's amazing uh i guess basically put me back in the mix you know uh and uh uh, she was talking to fred's wife carla sims who's dave's publicist and was like you should have matthew shoot some stuff for dave you know and and so long Um, story short that's, That's pretty off, but with was 2015. Is this when he's prepping for the three uh, specials for Netflix? He filmed one in Austin that year, and then 2000 March 2016, he filmed the one at the Palladium. So that's my first official gig. I'd shot some shows in 2015 and early 16. Just at comedy clubs around the country, or just around LA, like okay. you know, in New York, I think once, and then. Um, so yeah, so he once they were about to shoot that special at the Palladium it was three nights, six shows. They brought me in to shoot the stills, you know. So that was my first official yeah. gig. And Dave and I like I mean, we hit it off instantly and we were like very similar our musical taste, film, we're into a lot of the same stuff. We can make each other laugh, which was a plus, you know. And I've got a very inappropriate sense of humor, completely not politically correct. So it was like, okay, we're definitely meant to be hanging out and saying just really wrong things all the time and make each other laugh. And, and so, uh, and then the thing I think sadly that bonded us the most was about a month and a half later, Prince passes. And that was like, you know, I get a call that, um, he's going to do a a tribute show at the, with the no name bar on Fairfax. It's gone now. The, what was it? The no name or something? No name. Yeah. And, it was just kind of a surreal. We were all in shock, you know. It was just completely uh, couldn't couldn't even deal with reality because he was our hero. We knew him. It was like, mm-hmm. you know, they just we weren't ready for that. But somehow, where that, were you at when you heard the news? Uh, I was in my uh, I was in bed actually in the morning, and I get a text from afshin my friend the photographer yeah. and a text from ruth and they're like something's going on something's weird this had hadn't been announced yet um you know something's weird there's this a body at paisley park but they knew that there weren't a lot of people living there there was just prince oh. and that you know maybe it was somebody from the staff like so i was and we all had this horrendous feeling like yeah this is even though they're not saying what it is it felt like the energy uh had changed on the globe like there was something off you know and then i got a call from uh, a woman at cnn who i who i had uh, uh worked with previously and uh i think what happened is like she saw me talking to him at one of these parties or something and she was like oh you're like a prince guy an expert and stuff can you come on cnn and talk about it and like honestly normally i wouldn't even have done that i was in such shock that i was like maybe talking about him will help this you know surreal feeling and so i went on cnn and talked about him and you know his his legacy and all this stuff and i did a couple different shows and then it started to feel real you know and i remember like as i'm sitting in the interview i'm like 
they're like, oh, they found him in the elevator. And I'm like, okay, this is too much. Like, you know, with the let's go crazy, uh, the lyrics about the elevator bring you down. You know, I was like, oh, this is, this is too creepy. And, but that's, you know, the point at which, like, I feel like that Dave and I got into this very heavy Prince energy and, you know. I, I didn't know that about Dave. He's just a huge Prince fan enthusiast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like Dave, Chris Rock. Like, they were they were all good friends, too, you know, so. It was so shocking also just the way he passed because no one, you know, he didn't have any documented, um, you know, use of drugs or anybody. Usually somebody, have had, if they have an alcohol problem or, yeah. you know, I guess with a, uh, the greatest artist ever. Uh, you, and he was know, like the healthiest theater. guy you knew. That's what was funny. Like, he would, like you know, fine, like, or kick musicians out for, like, smoking cigarettes yeah, and doing no, drugs and, you know. But I, I, he couldn't do anything. Yeah, and I guess, you know, part of the issue here, which, you know, I, I can't judge, but it frustrates me sometimes is, you know, this is a whole religious belief, being a Jehovah's Witness, that you're not allowed to have blood transfusion, so he couldn't do the proper surgery and wow. therefore, you know, started using pain pills. But I, I, I really do believe that he didn't know whoever got these pills that he that killed him. I don't think he really knew what was in them, you know. So, well, I guess we'll never really know this, the truth, but it was a very sad, uh, sad day for sure. 